Good morning, everyone. We are going to get started in just a couple of minutes. I should say good morning or good afternoon, depends on where you are in Canada. Uh, where's everybody coming in from this morning? Mississauga, I see, so Ontario. Uh, Vancouver, yes, and I think they've disabled chat this morning uh, so that we go back and forth in the Q&A area. Weyburn, Saskatchewan, yes, awesome. Uh, New Brunswick, Hamilton, great. Victoria, BC, beautiful Victoria. Toronto, Nova Scotia, this is awesome. All across the country, Calgary. We just had QuickBooks get connected yesterday in Calgary. And uh, so my, uh, my voice is a little bit tired this morning, but uh, happy to be joining you this morning. Okay, we'll give it one more minute. Still have a bunch of people joining. So uh, feel free to take, uh, get up and get your last uh, the cup of coffee this morning. <laughs> this is awesome. People from all over, even Newfoundland, that's awesome. Hello, Adam. Halifax, beautiful Halifax. PEI, oh, that's great. So for you guys, it's afternoon already. <laughs> Crystal, too much singing and dancing. Yes, there was a, my band performed last night at QuickBooks Get Connected. So, uh, yeah, it was a it was a very fun evening seeing everybody there. Hopefully, those of you who are near the Toronto area or the Montreal area can uh, head out to QuickBooks get connected for those uh, awesome events. Great time, just connecting with everybody again after a, a few years of a hiatus. Okay, I think we're going to get started. We've got a lot to cover today, so I want to get through um, as much as I can for you. We're going to be doing slide presentation, and then after that, I'm going to be jumping into a live demo with ProTax doing the T2125, so the self-employed return as well as T2s. All right. So my name is, oh, I think my camera's off. There we go. My name is Jason Hasty. I am originally from Saskatchewan. I live in Calgary now. I have my master's in accounting and I'm also a CPA a CA. Uh, some housekeeping items for today. The webinar runs for one hour and 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Obviously, if you're on the webinar now, you know that it's uh, started. There is going to be a ProTax training guide that Intuit is going to email out to you with your CPD uh, information as well. So a lot of really, really valuable information in the ProTax training guide. A lot of the stuff that I'm going to be going through today um, is covered in the ProTax training guide. So it's a really, really great comprehensive guide for both T1 and T2. Today's course is eligible for one CBD credit. Those certificates will be emailed to you. And as I mentioned, uh, that will have the ProTax training guide as well. You should receive that email within one week of attending today's class. 
If you don't, please reach out to Intuit and let them know that you have not received it. Uh, disclaimer, all information in this webinar is for educational, informational purposes only. Uh, please do not consider it legal or tax advice on any of the opinions or specific matters. This webinar, its contents, and myself, presenter, are not to be relied upon for tax treatment of items reflected on tax returns. Okay, so what are we going to cover today? Very briefly, we're going to jump into why cloud, why ProTax, and then, of course, T1 and T2 through ProTax. We're going to be looking at books to tax and specifically filing a self-employed T1 and filing a T2, how to go about doing that in ProTax. Okay, so why cloud? Well, cloud brings many advantages. Some of the best, uh, obviously, safety, security, automatic backup and storage of all your data, and that 24-7 access anywhere from any device. So as long as you have an internet connection and a web browser on your computer, you can access ProTax. Something that I love about the cloud-based environment and specifically things that have been built into books to tax and into ProTax is the collaboration features. So being able to collaborate with the team members from your company, your firm, uh, go back and forth on files. We'll be talking about document storage today, as well as uh, putting notes on files so that you can keep updated on everything that's happening on a client's file. And of course, future ready. So you don't need to do any installing, any updating, any managing of the apps. It's all accessed through your web browser. So, you know, we had used Profile, which is a desktop version of Intuit's tax software for many, many years and a, a wonderful program. Uh, but, you know, you do have those issues with where is my data file stored? Is it on a USB drive? What's the latest version of a client file that I'm working on and things like that. Another really, really important thing to note with ProTax is it uses the same Intuit tax engine that has powered millions of tax returns all the way back to the 1990s. So that same tax engine is used in ProTax. And that's the, the and for again, for those of you that uh, are used to profile again, that is that same tax engine that is being used for ProTax. Uh, quickly toggle between the client file and your tax return. That's something that I'm going to be focusing on today. The QBO environment and then work papers and then heading through into ProTax. And I will be talking about starting a return directly in ProTax as well, because you do not necessarily have to have your clients on QBO to be using ProTax. And of course, it works on a PC and Mac. So having that cross uh, platform compatibility is a really important thing. Okay, so what tax years does ProTax cover? For T1, we can go all the way back to 2018. And then, of course, our current tax filing year of 2022. The next tax return due date for self-employed individuals is coming up very quickly on June 15th this year. Uh, so uh, get ready for that, another deadline. And then T2 module goes all the way back to 2015 and includes uh, 2023 for those corporate year ends that end in 2023. Pricing for ProTax. Uh, ProTax T1 is $500, T2 $800, T3 is $435. And right now in beta format is the forms expert. So doing the T4s, T4As, T5s, things like that, that is absolutely free to use right now. And something really important to note about ProTax, when you sign up and pay that subscription fee, that is valid for a full year and you can file unlimited tax returns with that. Um, you know, so you get unlimited tax returns for anyone in your organization uh, and uh, it lasts for that annual period. And I see Dean is asking, is there any bundle pricing? So there isn't currently any bundle pricing. You just purchase the modules that you need. Um, I think there is a promo going on right now. You can reach out to Intuit um, on Amazon gift cards. And something that ProTax has just released, at the bottom you'll see the 
ability to file just one tax return. So if you are just jumping into it, you want to kind of give it a try. Right now in ProTax, you can do up to seven T1s or T2s or T3s in the trial phase. When you want to file one of those, you can pay the one pay amount. So if you're just kind of jumping in, just kind of checking it out, now, now there is that ability to do the one file. Um, again, of course, the best value if you are jumping fully in is the annual subscription because that gives you unlimited tax returns. Something that I think is super valuable right now into it is offering a limited amount of free 30 minute free 30 minute onboarding calls. So getting you used to the environment, getting you onboarded, asking them any questions, you talk directly to an Intuit expert about profile. They will help you get set up, uh, even migrating any files and all of that kind of stuff. So um, in the ProTax area, you can just click on book your call. Okay, so I'm going to be jumping through things fairly fast today because we don't have a lot of time. We've only got an hour and I want to get to a little bit of a live demo at the end as well. Uh, starting off in ProTax, in your tax settings, uh, if you click on the tax settings button, you will see five different uh, areas that you can access the tax settings. The first, of course, is e-file. So really important to have uh, to be an e-filer in today's world makes it so much easier to get those tax returns filed very quickly. And something that I noticed in this year's tax season when we filed tax returns, almost instantaneous notices of assessment available for clients. And those clients that are signed up for uh, email notifications from the CRA, it is crazy how fast once you e-file that they will get that email saying that their return has been filed. So really, really efficient way of filing tax returns. The second area is the preparer info. So this is where you enter all of the information, um, like your rep ID, your group ID, if you're a discounter, uh, your discounter code. And if you have a business number and a registered that way, uh, that's where you enter your business number. But just note, um, the sorry, this is not where you enter the business number. The place where you access, if it's your business number coming forward, is in your QBOA settings. So you go to your QBOA settings in um, the area where you enter your business number there, and that will populate the area here for the preparer info. Uh, Wayne has a question on uh, process of getting an e-file number. Uh, the easiest thing to do, Wayne, is Google uh, CRA e-file. Make sure that the result that you get, that you the link that you click on when you Google it, is the CRA's website, Canada.ca. That will get you started with the whole process of getting an e-file number. It's relatively simple, but it does take some time to get approved. It can take up to a month to get approved. So uh, just note that. Um, and I see there's a question as well. Can we file using a web access code? Yes, absolutely. You can file uh, in ProTax using web access codes as well. The print tab. So this is creating any print sets that you want to use for, you know, for your office, for your client, things like that. Uh, one really handy feature that I'm not going to really get into today, but very important when you're working through the um, UBOA and the ProTax environment is sending out any kind of tax forms. Uh, ProTax allows you to send forms in PDF format with password protection. So really, really important to have that password protection within your uh, PDF documents because email is not a very secure method of sending um, clients sensitive data. And then we have the letters tab. So the letters tab, the letter editor is an amazing feature of ProTax and allows you to very easily use a word processor type uh, environment to create letters and documents for your clients. So things like your engagement letter, uh, things like that. And there are a lot of templates that are included in ProTax when you're creating those letters for your clients. Very easy to have fields populate in those letters as well. So if you want to send out 
you know, bulk emails and bulk letters to clients and things like this will be for your tax return year X. You just drag that um, that uh, field over into your word processor editor uh, in the letters and forms editor. Engagement letters and consent forms. You know, I say this all the time, uh, very, very important to get that engagement letter from your client. Uh, for your clients so that your clients have a really good understanding of what the engagement terms are. Um, so again, easy to get that through the ProTax environment. Also authorizing a representative, uh, really, really important as well to be an authorized rep for your clients. The process has gotten a little tougher. Um, for T1s, it's still fairly straightforward and fairly easy. And ProTax has an area on the main screen where you can add a representative directly for a client's tax return um, T1. You have to just get them to sign it, ensure that they've signed that before you file the authorize a representative. In the T2 environment, it's a little bit different now. The CRA has clamped down uh, a little bit tighter security. And with that, um, you have to get authorization from your client. So at my company, Tenjigo, what we always um, point our clients towards is getting a CRA My Account and a CRA My Business Account. So once you have that, that is the easiest way for clients to um, authorize you as a representative. Um, and Crystal, kind of looking at, at your question, get your clients to, to have the CRA My Business Account and then they can authorize you directly through there. It makes it much easier for T2s. T1s, it's still relatively straightforward. Colors and indicators. I say, you know, take a screenshot of this screen. Um, this is your direction of what the different colors in ProTax mean. So in the cells, if you see a purple cell, a little cell with a purple line on the right-hand side, that means that that is a carried forward value. Um, so it's been carried forward from a previous return. If you see that cell is in red, that means that cell has been overridden. Something important to note, to delete an overridden cell, you clear the contents of the cell and then tab out. Like don't press a zero, but actually clear the contents, hit the, you know, select everything that you see in the cell, hit delete and tab out of that cell. ProTax is also added in the auditor where you can uh, click on the little trash can to uh, remove an override. But it's a little bit different than the doing a right click and remove override if you're used to that in profile. Another really important um, handy feature is the go to source. If you see a little arrow, an upward arrow and a blue cell there, that's your calculated value. If you wanna find out how that value was calculated or where the information came from, you just click on the upward arrow on the go to source and it'll take you right there. And you can also jump back. Once you're at that cell, you can jump back to the form that you were working on as well. Okay, so the live auditor, ProTax engine includes the auditor, same auditor that we've had with profile as well. A very powerful auditor that lets you know anything that you know, needs to be changed, anything that could be uh, incorrect with your tax return. The live auditor takes it a step further and lets you know instantaneously when you are working in a cell uh, if there is something wrong. So an example that's given here on Jane's tax return, her social insurance number is incorrect. So it's flagged right there to let you know that something is wrong and it needs to be fixed. And that's enabling the live editor, live auditor, sorry. And quick mode. So if you have lower bandwidth, if you don't have a great internet connection, you can enable quick mode and it will um, enable, um, it'll, it'll use a lower bandwidth. So you're not using as much internet uh, or Wi-Fi bandwidth or internet usage. What it does is if you don't have the quick mode on, then it'll calculate each cell as you go through them. The quick mode changes that a little bit. So there's not, there won't be a, a lag or a delay if you do have that lower bandwidth. 
Another really awesome feature, you can invoice your client directly from ProTax now. So once you've finished up that tax return, um, you want to get that invoice out to your clients very easy just through the clicking the invoice client button. Okay, so let's start off talking about ProTax T1. We're going to go through a few of the features, the T1 autofill, the importing and carrying forward, uh, T1 Express entry, which is an awesome way to very quickly fill out a basic T1 client's tax return if they don't have a lot of things going on, if they just have their general T slips, things like that. E-filing, linked returns, including dependents, pension splitting, and additional features such as attaching source documents, and then the express notice of assessment. And we are also gonna be talking about self-employed clients. So that's kind of the demo, what we really wanted to do a deeper dive for you today. And again, with that um, deadline coming up June 15th for self-employed tax returns. Okay, so importing T1 files, you can import T1s from profile, uh, you can carry forward tax returns from tax cycle and other uh, tax software as well. So that's in the import returns button with the drop down. That's where you can select that if you are moving from another platform. The tax settings button that I talked about that had the e file, the prepare, interval, all of that, you can see that um, showing at the top right there. That's where that gear wheel is for your tax settings for ProTax. Um, important to carry forward, uh, carrying forward returns, you can do that in bulk as well. So if you have used ProTax in the past, um, you can carry forward all your past T1 uh, returns. If you are importing returns from profile, you can do a batch import there as well, um, and then carry forward those. Uh, so very easy to do that as well in, in batch or bulk format. On the screen, um, just want to kind of point out the area with the ad um, for the authorizer representative. So when you're working on a client's tax return, that you can go directly there to add a representative, um, uh, the feature so that you, you've got access to things like the um, autofill my tax return and things like that. Starting a new T T1 file, you can do that as well. In ProTax, you click on the Create New Tax Return, and this is where you will notice the two different options given to you for the T1 return, standard one or a T1 self-employed. So again, if you have that self-employed uh, client, that's where you would get that. Uh, I'm not going to go through this in much detail, uh, but basically this is the layout a lot of different options and sorting and filtering uh, by client name, status, all of that kind of stuff um, in your uh, main screen for ProTax. Just very quickly want to touch on the uh, quick bar. The quick bar is like your search feature. It gives you access to searching forms, line numbers, um, even asking questions. And you can search by line number, you can search by name. So really, really um, comprehensive uh, way to search and a very easy way to search within the ProTax environment. Um, I will be talking about the attached documents feature. This is one of the best things with the cloud environment. Anytime you can attach source documents as we do in you know, QuickBooks online files for our clients, it just makes it so much easier. If you ever need to access those documents again, uh, they will be attached to your return. And just note that they are not um, sent to the CRA. So there will, if there are forms that you're filling out and uh, attachments that you are sending to the CRA, you will be notified that uh, with a dialogue box on those items. But you can attach any items that are relevant to your client's tax return. And in the session that I taught yesterday at Get Connected in Calgary, uh, I had somebody ask me about, you know, like how do you find, you know, the time savings in ProTax? And really like one of the best features is just this document repository, being able to, to access, you know, I uh, things that I think of often are um, like a, a corporation and I need their incorporation documents. 
Well, I make sure that those are attached in um, QuickBooks Online, in the ProTax environment, especially if it's a first year tax return, so that they can be accessed very easy. Okay, I touched on uh, T1 Express data entry. Very easy. It's a one form that allows you to fill out your client's tax return with the most common um, things like T-slips, uh, medical info, debt donations, that kind of stuff. And then adding a form as well, uh, talking about the quick bar, this just gives you a good indication of as soon as you start typing investment, it pulls up all of the forms and anything that has to do with investment. So again, if you can't remember what the form is called, um, it's very easy to search this way uh, through the quick bar. And that's at the top left part of the tax return. The auditor, I touched on that briefly as well. Uh, the auditor, very, very powerful um, feature of ProTax that allows you to get your tax returns filed properly uh, to help avoid those e-file rejections, things like that. Uh, it's broken up into four different areas, issues, warnings, sign-offs, and overrides. So, you know, just based on what you are going, if there's an issue that it sees, um, for example, this is talking about foreign income reporting, um, you know, you need to answer this, things like that. Any warnings, any things that, you know, look like out of place, it will um, let you know those sign-offs. So, you know, it's been signed off by the preparer, um, the reviewer, things like that. And then that's where those overrides sit. So it's one area that you can access and see any cells that have been overridden. And that's where um, Intuit has now put in the little trash can in the overrides feature so that you can just delete an override directly from there. Uh, Crystal, yes, a question about importing from the CRA. Yes, and I think that should be coming up shortly. Um, PDF forms, um, being able to see how the tax return looks, the actual tax return, uh, you can toggle between your data input area and your PDF form viewer. So very easy to toggle back and forth between the two to see exactly what the tax return is going to look like. Okay, um, wrapping it up, as you can see here, I've had a few questions about the summary. So there is the view summary area that you can see your tax return summary. There's the T1 Express. Um, things like uh, getting the authorization from your, from your client to e-file using uh, the T183 return. You can do create this return directly in ProTax, print it, have it automatically assigned a password for the PDF as well, download it, and then email it to your client. So you can do that directly in ProTax uh, to have that authorization. And then to e-file, you just click on the return actions, and you can e-file from there. And note that you can also refile tax returns from there. So there is that uh, option in ProTax as well. Crystal had asked about bringing in information from the CRA. Yes, absolutely. ProTax allows you to do your autofill. Uh, what a time saver this is. I remember when we started using it a number of years ago and it's improved. Um, so much since then from the CRA, the CRA is allowing, giving more information and more access. Uh, so this CRA autofill my tax return um, or your client's tax return, one button click to pull in all the information that the CRA has on your client and fills it into the tax return, which you then can review. Um, I think the last screen showed uh, the data import summary. So if you see there on the left, in the forms area, uh, just under carry forward, we have our data import summary. So that's where you can get a summary of everything that has been imported from the CRA. Linked returns, of course, yes, you can do linked returns, you can do spousal returns, and you can also do dependents as well. So um, very easy to toggle back and forth once you have linked returns in ProTax, just the buttons that will appear at the top, uh, with the different spouses or uh, dependents that you can go back and forth between. Pension splitting. 
This is an awesome feature. Uh, if you've used Profile, you know the pension splitting optimization. This is available in ProTax as well. So being able to use uh, to click with a click of a button to have the optim optimization done for you between uh, spouses and them splitting pension and saving uh, the most in tax. It's very easy to see. Um, it gives you a very uh, good indicator as long, this screen doesn't show it, but there's a visual bar indicator as well that you will see once you do the pension splitting. I talked about attaching source documents. Really easy to attach source documents here. Again, you know, just the importance of having them attached and being accessible from anywhere because you're working in the cloud. Intuit has done a lot of work on both having documents attached and collaboration with clients. So you will note now that you can request uh, information from clients as well. You can, uh, instead of you emailing them to ask them about information and them sending it to you and it getting lost in your thousands of emails, you can initiate a request directly from QuickBooks Online Account and specifically in work papers, um, which allows you to very easily get the information from the client. The client will get an email saying that they've been requested information. It will also appear on the client's QBO file in the um, accountant area. So if they click on accountant on the, the left-hand bar, they will see a request for documents. And then you can see also any documents that you have with your client as well. Okay, so let's jump into the self-employment and the T2125. This screen is showing you the books to tax. So we are gonna take you, I will take you today through QBO, books to tax, and then to pro tax and show you how that workflow, uh, how it works and how efficient it is. And, you know, the thing that kind of we talk about a lot is app fatigue. The beauty of using pro tax uh, with QBO, with your client's files, is it flows directly from your QBO file into work papers. You can uh, work on the year end there and then put it directly into ProTax. So no manual entering, no typing, no importing, exporting uh, makes it very easy um, uh, to use in the future or use now and be future ready as well. Um, and when I say future ready, what I'm talking about is um, the different features that are, are available. If any of you out there have used ProTax in the past, um, going forward, rolling forward those, those tax returns or carrying them forward into the next year and the client's QBO file, you will note that all that mapping carries forward. So, you know, it's a little bit more work at the beginning to get it done. But then once you get that uh, mapped into the Giphy, it carries forward year on year into your client's tax file. Um, so then you don't have to spend time re-entering manually or re-importing each year. Okay, so when you are working on a client's file, on the left-hand side, you will see the books to tax option. In that, it will give you three different options. The first being your books review. That is like your monthly review that you do for your clients. Um, that is, you know, gives you, you know, any kind of cleanup items that you need to look at, um, you know, anything that hasn't been uh, properly taken care of, reconciliations, things like that. So that books review is kind of like, think of it as your monthly, you know, unless you're doing your clients, you know, quarterly or whatever the period is, but it's on that periodic basis. That's where you do the review there. Clicking into work papers, that's the second area. That is your year-end preparation for your client. That gives you the trial balance that you can look at. Um, for those of you that are familiar with working with things like caseware, um, this is the very similar format for going through all of the different chart of accounts and working on all of those um, accounts um, as you prepare your year-end files. So within work papers, you can do a bunch of things. You can, you know, make adjusting entries. You've got a very good visual uh, view of your current year, your previous year, uh, both the percentage change and the dollar change year on year. And um, just a really good visual way to see, you know, do any kind of analytics to see, you know, oh, why is, you know, office expenses? Why have they increased? 
by 300%, things like that. Um, so that's the work papers area. We'll be jumping directly into it in the live preview. Uh, and then, of course, the work papers documents. Again, you know, I feel like I've you know mentioned this a few times, but very, very powerful way to attach documents to these work papers and have the source documentation there that support all of the different accounts that appear in work papers. Um, note here that you can also add links. So for example, if you, you know, um, you know, I should jump back to the task list. Um, I, I, I'm not touching on it much today, but you will see the year end task list there. Um, that's your task list that you can go through and anybody working on a client's file can go through um, just to simplify it and know the workflow there. Now jumping back to talking about the links. The reason that I went back and talked about the year end task list is because you can add links there as well. So within your work papers documents, you can also add links. Things like, you know, if you want to link to um, this one is showing CRAs, you know, what are the rules for doubtful accounts? So having a link to that, or what are the automobile rates for the current year? Things like that. You can link and then click directly um, to the uh, whatever the website that you're linking. Review and adjust. This is the trial balance area. Um, we've got our adjusting entries that we can do here. Um, we can add notes. We can add attachments. The notes area, again, is where you communicate with your team. Um, or, I mean, even if yourself, if you want to leave any kind of notes on that client's tax file or that client's year-end file, you can do it right here. And everything is date stamped as well, which is a, another handy feature. Okay, so I'm going to jump into the live demo for T2125. Okay, let me share the screen. Did I have it up already? Okay, so hopefully everybody can see uh, Craig's landscaping. That is our test client today. Just gonna move it over into. Okay, so we're in Craig's landscaping QBO file. Um, again, the books to tax is accessible directly at the top here. Um, want to share with you as well, the My Accountant I talked about. Uh, this is where you can have requests from clients, you can have shared documents, all of that kind of stuff. So really powerful feature um, that your client can access in the My Accountant area. Okay, so jumping for books to tax. Here's where we have our books review, then we have our work papers, and then our income tax. So once we've kind of got things handled in um, QBO, uh, one other thing that I do want to show you here, I'm just going to pull up a profit and loss. And I think we are working on the 2021 year. Uh, one thing that I wanted to show you, because I get this question a lot about use of home expenses. Um, this is how we generally set them up. Um, everybody is different. But we generally set up, if you have a sole proprietor client, a self-employed client that's using a T2125, we set up the use of home expenses as an other expense. And then we have the different items uh, below that. So such as utilities, property taxes, you know, mortgage interest, things like that. So I just wanted to point that out in the profit and loss. So here we've got the profit and loss. We're going to jump to our work papers. That's where we will complete the year end for the client. Um, Year-end tasks I touched on, uh, that's, you know, the different items that we're going to go through in preparing the tax return or the year-end and things that you can do. You can mark the status done, waiting, um, you know, if, there, if it's a to-do thing. This is where you can add um, documents, you can add um, URLs, other links, other things like that. Uh, going through there, you can add letters and all that to your clients. Um, so the documents area under the work papers um, main area as well. Reviewing and adjustment, uh, reviewing and adjusting. Uh, I touched briefly on that. You can also do the trial balance view. That gives you more of your information, your adjusting entries, debits, credits, uh, splits those out there. 
uh, and you just toggle back and forth with those. Something else to note, uh, preparer and reviewer. So, um, you know, if uh, each area has been gone through by preparer or the reviewer, it's been reviewed, you can mark those off. And just also note that it flags the date for you there as well. Books to tax actions. So once you've completed your year end in QuickBooks work papers, uh, you can also download it to a zip. So if you are giving this, if you are not preparing the year end tax file, you're giving it to an accountant, you can download it here. Um, you can also download it to a zip to keep as a backup copy. You can also lock it. And when you're doing that Giphy, you can also export the Giphy from here. Jumping into income tax. Sorry, one other area in work papers I'm gonna take you to, the grouping and statements. If you are preparing statements for a client, this is where you do it through the groupings and statements. Uh, you can prepare it, you can export it to Excel. And that's where, you know, if you have 10 different, say, bank accounts, you don't want it to appear on the um, financial statements as 10 different. You want it just to appear as cash and cash equivalents, things like that. Okay, so jumping into the income tax area, the year that you're working on, the client that you're working on, and then what tax form they are using. So very easy to select right from here, whether it's a T2, whether it's a corporate tax return, or if it's a self-employed T2125 that will be part of the T1 tax return. Scrolling through here, this is where we do our tax mapping. So this is where we map it. Um, it's the Giphy codes, the General Index of Financial Information. When we are working on a T2125 self-employed tax return, it's a little bit different. Um, so those are, of you that are, are most used to using the, the Giphy for uh, corporate tax and clients where you have the Schedule 100 and Schedule 125, uh, those codes are different than the ones that are used on the T2125. Uh, something that I just want to show here. I set up the property taxes account under the other expenses, um, and it is already mapped to part four. Uh, oh, sorry, it's not mapped. So let's go ahead and map that. Our use of home expenses are in part seven. Um, so property taxes, there we are. So very easy to map it to the Giphy, and that's what will carry forward when you are filing the tax return. So just mapping it there. Uh, it will let you know any accounts that you don't have mapped. Just note that use of home expenses, super cool feature. You can map those directly. Um, automobile expenses, because there could be multiple automobiles, you currently, uh, those do not currently carry forward to your tax return. So just note that, but the use of home expenses do, and I will show you how they carry forward. So once you've got everything mapped, easy as creating, uh, clicking on the start return in ProTax. It will bring in all of the information from QuickBooks work papers into your ProTax. It will show you a trial balance summary of what it's going to look like when you bring it directly into ProTax. So I'm just going to say, okay. Uh, note here that you do not have to have clients in QBO to use ProTax for T1s or T2s. You can also start a blank return. In T2s, you can also do that um, Giphy import. If in viewing the trial balance summary, you see something that's out of place, you can just go back directly back to work papers. So very easy to toggle, a easy way to toggle back to work papers. Notice the business use of home here. I've mapped both of those as part of seven uh, on the T2125, area seven. So clicking through, now we've entered the client's tax return. We are going to be entering, um, you know, all of the information for this T1. Specifically today, what we're talking about is a T2125. Note that it's already uh, included in your list of forms on the tax return. Just click on 
If you have multiple T2125s, they can all be added here. This one is the one that's carried forward for us. So we just click on the details here and it will bring us to our business activities. And you will see that everything is mapped and that's come through directly from work papers. So the area that I just wanna show you quickly today is part seven, the use of home expenses and the slick feature there. So as we can see, those amounts that we had for property taxes and our utilities or this, uh, in this sense, electricity, they are entered already. This is where you can enter your area that you use for business versus the area for the full house. Um, so that will carry forward as part of the uh, same percentage for all of your use of home expenses. So it's really nice because you see the amount that you've included on the profit and loss in your client's QBO file uh, in work papers, and that amount carries directly through into ProTax and then is um, um, the percentage of your uh, area for business is allocated directly in ProTax. Okay, so let's jump back to our presentation. And we're going to talk about E2s. And for those of you that don't know, the Q&A area, um, I mentioned it briefly at the start, feel free to ask your questions. We have the Intuit team uh, answering most of those questions for you uh, as we go through. So ask all of your questions through the Q&A and the Intuit team will answer them for you. I've seen a lot of questions come through, so that's great. I'd love to see that. Okay, so T2, again, of course, books to tax. Um, the full area, we touched on the books review, the work papers and the income tax. Same thing with T1, you have the ability to import and carry forward your tax returns. Uh, E-file as well is available to you through uh, ProTax T2. These are just uh, the duplicate slides of what we've seen before. Um, the documents again wanna touch on, uh, the review and adjust and groupings and statements. Probably with, with more of the T2 files with your corporate tax clients uh, or your corporate clients, you will use the groupings and statements uh, to prepare your um, those statements for your clients. And then the tax mapping. Just note that if you are um, lost in the tax mapping area, if you're in work papers, note that you have to go to the income tax area to um, map those. Uh, I was looking for it one time, originally it was down in the other area and I was thinking, well, where did, where did, uh, ProTax or where did QBOA move it? And now it's in its separate area at the top next to work papers. Starting a T2 from work papers, um, just as easy as we saw starting the T1 from work papers. So there where I showed you, you had the ability to select which, tax return you're going to be creating. Is it a T2 or a T2125? You select the T2 and then you simply click on the start return in ProTax after you've completed all of your year-end tasks. And again, note that you've got three options um, when creating a T2. You can come directly from the client's work papers. Uh, you can also create a blank T2. So very easy to do that. Once you are in ProTax on the T2 side, you just click on the green button, create new return. You can also do a Giphy import into your uh, T2. So if you uh, have a Giphy file that you wanna do, and that's what we'll be uh, looking at today in creating a T2, we will do it through Giphy. And then of course, T2 autofill. So that autofill feature is available for T2s as well. Um, I know that a lot of people don't really use that feature as much as the T1 autofill, um, but it is there and it is really handy to pull in a lot of the information. Okay, and I'm just gonna close off um, 
and do another demo here on T2. So it'll be very similar. We covered most of the areas in the T1 Protax, but I'm going to do the T2 as well to show you that Giphy import. Okay. Just make sure that I get onto the right um, Protax file. Okay, so we're back in Craig's landscaping. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go, go back to it and we're gonna select the T2. I'll just take you through very quickly um, how that would work uh, when you were doing a T2. So um, just to kind of give you a, a quick idea and a refresher there on the, uh, the type of tax return. So again, that's in the income tax. In this case, in, if Craig's tax was an incorporated company, we would see the same type of mapping. This is probably more about the familiar Giphy that you're used to seeing, um, the codes there. Same thing, you just start the return in ProTax directly from there. Again, it will bring it directly in from uh, work papers, and give you your trial balance summary. And then you simply click continue and you go into your T2 environment from there. If you are wanting to just jump into ProTax and start um, a, just a blank return, you can go also directly from your left-hand bar, ProTax T2, create new return. You can do assign it to a client. You can name your return anything you want to. And this is where you can upload your Giphy files. So very easy to upload a Giphy file to drag and drop or just to click on the file. Select the file and instantly your Giphy is uploaded. So very easy to get that and continue into ProTax from a, a Giphy file. Starting a black, blank tax return as well, you can do that. Again, you do not have to have your client in QBO to start a, a tax return in ProTax. So that's our T2 and our T1 um, uh, with a T1, T2125. And I just jump back into the presentation. And just end with some ProTax resources. A lot of different resources that we have in ProTax. One thing that I want to point out, when you are wanting to get help in ProTax, make sure you go to the bottom ProTax help blue button. If you click the help at the top, that is more for your QBOA help, uh, but you want to be uh, in a specific ProTax help and that's accessed at the bottom in the blue button. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this QR code or uh, hold your smartphone up. This gives you a lot of different, uh, very easy to understand videos on working with ProTax. And as you can see, you know, very short videos, two minutes, four minutes. I think the longest one here is 12 minutes, just under 12 minutes. Um, so very um, helpful videos in getting to learn ProTax. and additional resources. Um, Intuit has a multitude of resources, FAQs, things like that. If you are wondering about any kind of events coming up or uh, ways to access webinars like this one, uh, remember you've always got your Pro Advisor training portal. So when you're in QBOA, clicking on Pro Advisor and then clicking training, that will give you access to all the webinars that are coming up as well. And then clicking on the ProTax help area, uh, that will bring you to a bunch of different areas like uh, CRA resources, 
um, FAQs, any FAQs. And there's a lot of really good resources there um, relating to small businesses and helping out your small business clients as well. All right, and that's it. I know the tax season is not technically over because we still have our June 15th uh, T1 uh, self-employed uh, returns that are due, uh, but the majority of T1s uh, hopefully are, are done for most of you. Uh, just looking to see any final questions, uh, autofill. Um, yeah, I think the Intuit team has answered most of that. So thank you so much for attending today, everyone. You should get that CPD um, email uh, within a week. And um, yeah, good luck. Enjoy. Uh, once you make the switch to ProTax, I know that you will... Uh, Save yourself a lot of time and the collaboration efforts with your team uh, to me is one of the, the best features.